personally, what has been one of your biggest challenges that you've faced and, and um, what did you learn from it? Um, I think, I, I think, in all honesty, probably the move to the UK was, was a big one with a young family and wife and the unknown um, going into a, a fairly, what is a traditionally fairly volatile sort of industry. And again, coming from outside of um, the sport, um, I think it's probably the hardest but best thing I've ever done in a professional sense. Um, yeah, a lot of sort of sink or swim moments and um, yeah, I think that's probably been one of the yeah, greatest, I suppose, challenges, um, but equally one of the most rewarding as well. If you're taking a player through a hamstring rehabilitation, is, you know, um, is that an area that you do more research on because that's, it's specific to your role in that position or like you mentioned, how high performance culture is something you're interested in the moment. So we read a book on that. Like, is it it's quite specific or is it more just general in how you upskill yourself over, over your career? Yeah, um, I suppose I've, I've never really been strategic about it, but, but, you know, probably like yourself, you know, like your offerings with social media podcasts, um, you know, Twitter even. Um, that sort of thing, but probably the big thing is 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 actually engaging with with people. And you know, I think I touched on it earlier that generally speaking, most people are pretty willing to to pick up the phone or reply to an email, um, especially in AFL circles. You know, we've, we've got a great cohort, as you know, of strength and conditioning coaches and and, and physios that you know, it's a, you're only a phone call away. And in that reporting, uh, keeping your records process so you've got like the qualitative data i imagine and then what sort of quantitative stuff are you noting are you noting things like how the athlete is presenting from a mood point of view or is it more screening information and, and sort of your subjective view on things what do you think is important for practitioners to know um yeah. during the rehab process yeah look i think you know there's high scrutiny in afl especially so you know your objective data is pretty easy to, to come by um you know, it's abundant. It's um, there's lots of it. I probably lean more towards the sub subjective stuff. You know, those discussions you have with the athlete, with other practitioners, those sorts of things. Um, just that mud mapping of ideas, I think, is really important. Um, and yeah, that's the stuff I lean on probably more so. A couple of questions for you, Tim. Is First one would be is, do you ever lie to a player regarding the injury to change their mentality about it? <laughs> oh, that, that's, a, that's a great question. It's a, probably a loaded question. Um, I, I think some of your, mes your messaging is really important. Um, well, um, I, I don't think you ever actively lie, but you might paint a slightly um, more favourable version of the truth. Um, yeah, and I, I suppose at, at the end of the day, like if your intention is good and you're genuinely doing, trying to do the best thing for the athlete, um, look, it may be you're sort of hosing down some anxieties or, um, you know, some, some, um, some fear avoidance behaviours or, you know, even just a, a player's mindset. Um, if you're trying to just nudge that, then, you know, I think you can craft versions of the truth. Um, but I don't think you, you would ever blatantly lie lie to the athlete. He's written another question. Uh, how often do players stick to the recovery plan 100%? It may be re potentially rehab plan 100%, um, I imagine. Yeah, how often do players stick to the re rehabilitation plan? Um, yeah, it's, it's a tricky one to answer. I suppose the main thing is it's never set in stone. Um, I think whenever you map out a, a rehab plan, you always have a sort of asterisk as to your best case, worst case, and most realistic case scenario. Um, and as I touched on earlier, there's no such thing as, as a perfect rehab by any stretch, but equal to that, you can have rehabs that, you know, exceed your expectations. And, and that's where you sort of need to lean on your sort of clinical experience and the experience of the, you know, the, the high performance practitioners around you to, you know, to bounce ideas and it's like, you know, can we, can we push this? Um, so it, probably in terms of putting a number to it, you'd hope that you get most of them around the ballpark, but, but obviously, if you, you know, things happen and, you know, guys progress or they even regress at, at, at certain points. Uh, in your work life, what are your pet peeves? What makes you uh, angry? There's a couple of things. I think the first thing is um, 
you know, I'm not saying this because I, you know, that's an issue at, at any point. But one of the things I, I struggle with is is people who aren't willing to engage with each other in that sort of high performance medical space. Um, you know, they're not willing to embrace the transparency aspect of the the business. Um, so that's something that kind of annoys me. I, I, I really, I don't like turf wars. I don't like, you know, this sort of people working in silos that, that frustrates me at a, at a professional level. Um, and then communication, I think is, is pretty, again, it's so cliche, but it, it's pretty important. And, and people who don't or refuse to communicate um, sort of drive me a bit mad at, at various points. 